Yo, what's up, you two? James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2019 Back to Back Battles. Today, we are going to be using Hirofumi Second Place World Team once again with Groudon, Tapu Lele, Necrozma Dustmane. We have Salamence, Umbreon, and Kangaskhan. If you want to go check out the team report, it's in the description down below. Otherwise, if you want to check out Hirofumi and his uh, Twitter, it'll be linked in the description down below as well. But today's question of the day is which of the teams that you saw in the top eight of the Pokemon World Championship this year did you enjoy the most? And of course, this question can't really go to me because I think the team, <laughs> I would say my team just because I enjoy playing it a bunch. It is still my favorite team probably in VGC. But um, overall, I think the team that I enjoyed the most after my own would have been, I think it would have actually been this team. Uh, I really did enjoy Hirofumi's team in general. Um, I, I thought it was a really cool idea at the time. I thought it was really strange too, but I felt it was also really good and it was a great call. But yeah, it definitely, I think, was the team that caught my eye the most. But let me know what team caught your eye the most in the comments down below. But otherwise, let's get started and play some games. So... This team has been doing pretty well so far. Uh, we're going to continue to ladder on, play some games, and hopefully learn more stuff about this team as we go along, as we do about almost every other team that we play on the channel. But, of course, people probably have been asking me, James, you've been using a bunch of the world scenes. Why haven't you been really building? And I feel like the main question is not many players are really building in Ultra Series anymore just because of the fact that everyone is pretty much just looking forward to the Sword and Shield. Like, there's only one more important event for uh, Ultra Series, and that is the Latin America International Championship. But I'm not sure um, if it's, like, an event everyone's preparing for because only a certain group of players are playing for. So pretty much everyone's just trying to get as much championship points as possible from the regionals and, uh, of course, the international championship in Latin America. But otherwise, uh, there's not really much need to prepare for that as much as Sword and Shield and pretty much that's what I'm going for. I'm trying to divide my time wisely and trying to showcase the best teams which I think we saw at Worlds. Uh, we have XL which is a really bad matchup here. Oh, this is a really bad matchup. Hmm. I think I go Kang. Kang Lucario? Yeah, I'm gonna go Kang. Uh, no, Kang uh, Tapu Lele, <laughs> which is a really weird lead, but I feel like that covers the Lucario, Lunala lead, and some other stuff. Um, the Krasma Ground on the back, I think. This is a really bad. <laughs> this is a really bad team to deal with for this team. Uh, I remember like fearing this, and it's really tough. Like the Kang. Bite flinch the Lunala is pretty much your best out, in my opinion. You there's just not much you can do against this team. The fact that uh, well positioned Xerneas or well positioned Lunala, Lunala is already one of those Pokemon that get struggles, and you can't really bring the Umbreon because usually the support Pokemon such as Lucario and of course the Xerneas will give you a tough time already, especially if it's like the Lele version, like the one we're seeing here. So. Yeah, it's going to be pretty tough, especially since Fairy Order will boost the top of the ice Moonblast, so it can always guarantee KO the Umbreon, which is bad. Incineroar Lunala will lead the field against my uh, Kangaskhan plus uh, Tapu Lele. Alright, I'm relying on the Bite Flinch anyway. I don't know if the Lunala will carry Protect on this team. Sometimes they carry Wide Guard Tailwind, Roar, and not Protect, so... Might be worth just to go for the attacks in the Lunala. I think I'm just going to go for a bite into the Lunala slot and I think just Moonblast that slot too. Um, Incineroar most likely going to switch out, maybe through U-turn, maybe it just um, hard switches. I think you would just go for the U-turn and I don't know what Lunala does. It really comes down to does it have Protect or not. Right now I think I have to bank on it not having Protect in order to have a good chance. I will go for a bite here into Lunala and a uh, Moonblast into the Lunala as well because I don't think this KOs, but if it can, that'd be great. But again, I have to go for the flinch regardless. <laughs> There's no other play. <laughs> so we'll get um, Kangaskhan, Mega Vault. Lunala does really well protect. So uh, 
if my opponent was in front of me, I'd probably shake hands because that's probably it. I would have had to predict and protect and go for the bite into Incineroar, but I lose if my opponent just tailwinds immediately. Um, of course, it depends on what my opponent decides to bring out now, which is a pretty big factor too. Uh, what, who would it be? Xerneas? Nah, I think it's Lucario. And then you just click close combat. I have to hope for like, what, a Moonblast crit? <laughs> That's pretty much my game plan. It's the only option I have really against this team, I feel like. Uh, yeah. Not really a good start. Oh, Xerneas comes in. Okay. I'm still going to bite the Lunala because I'm forced to bite the Lunala and hope that flinches. Or maybe I should roar to Xerneas. I'm going to roar to Xerneas, actually. It might be better. Did I Moonblast to Lunala? Break a shower shift. I just don't know if Lunala's standing in or not, because I could see Incineroar coming in. I'm actually going to roar and Moonblast the Theranius, expecting Lunala to switch out, which it does. Incineroar? Yeah, okay, perfect. So, <laughs> I'm getting some momentum at least. Uh, that depends if the Xerneas protects or not, which I feel like you would just Geomancy right here. I just don't see a reason not to uh, click Geomancy. Uh, we will click Moonblast. I don't think Double Edge would have KO'd at minus two, which is why I went for this play. It might have actually, but there is a Geomancy, so uh, maybe there's some light at this dark end of the tunnel, so we will see the Geomancy come out. And then, yeah, this is actually looking winnable now, since Xerneas expended its, uh, it's basically, it's, uh, what would I call it? It's ace up the sleeve, as Roar will come out into the Xerneas slot. Show me something that's not Lunala, please. It is Lunala once again, dang it. Um, I'm still going to bite because that's my best answer to the Lunala. I'm being realistic here. And I just Moonblast the Lunala too. Like my opponent might go on the offensive here. I feel like it's just always better to Moonblast Incin. Yeah, to put an Earth Power Range from Necrozma. I'm not going to KO the Lunala with minus two bite anyway to, from Moonblast. I might as well just go for the regular bite. I need a flinch anyway, regardless. Like, I might have got a decent shot now because of the Xerneas wasting its Geomancy, but it's still a pretty tough game because the Lunala is really difficult to handle. Uh, again, we have to go for flinches, and that's not exactly a fun win con to deal with, no matter whose side of the spectrum you're on. We do see the Lunala protect once again, so at least I didn't really fall into that as much. Again, I don't think I need to make super aggressive reads. I need luck with the bite. <laughs> That's basically how I'm going to do this. Bite goes into Lunala. U-turn comes out into the Kang because he needs to trip the Kang. Um, let's see who's coming up. If I can chip away this Lunala, I feel like I have a pretty good shot. Inkscon comes in. Okay. That's an interesting Pokemon to have brought. I'm still going to fake out and Moonblast. I mean, bite and Moonblast the uh, Lunala slot. Even Lunala switches out because if Lunala switches out, that's Incineroar or Xerneas. And I get chip regardless. And the fact is, that might allow me to get momentum. Because if I can get Ground on their Trick Room, maybe I can win the game. My opponent stays in with both Pokemon too. So this is interesting. If I win the speed tie and get the bite flinch, I win, I think. Guaranteed. Because I just don't see how my opponent comes back from that. We're going to get a Moonblast off. Wow, that did nothing. And low kick. Outspeeds. Chaos my Kang. Yeah, I think uh, our Lele is going to drop too. Oh, Tailwind comes up. Yeah, I think even with the... <laughs> Even with the opportunity that I had, I think there was no way to win this because now it's going to come down to some other factors. I'm going to go into a Necrozma here. And you're just going to double at Z here. And then I have no other play because I can't break through the Lunala Undertale, which is the problem part. Um, Maybe I could have played that better. I guess I should have bite the Incinera, huh? But I would have... Yeah, I think against this team... Even if I get, like, some reads right, I need a lot of the reads. I think I have to read my opponent every single uh, case here because, yeah. And even then, if I didn't get the bite flinch on Incineroar, I, st I still had to go for the speed tie regardless. 
And I still need to get to flinch even if I won that speed tie, so Yikes. Protect the Necrozma here. Bite. Oh, don't tell me you just bite the Necrozma and Moon Guys beam. That is not I don't like that play at all. I think you had to save double edge and Z. Even the chip damage would have probably put me into bite and moon guys beam range anyway. So I really don't get that play. <laughs> that was so unnecessary, I think, for my opponent. Um, go grout on here. Maybe I go for the double protect and hope I can get the double protect, but my opponent might just go for the Z move and the grout on too. Uh, I think I have to get the read right too, and I don't think I can. Um... So if you Z move here, my uh, Necros. Uh, I feel like you target grout on though. I do feel like you target Grout on. You know what? I'm gonna trick room and protect. You might just bite the Grout on though. You could you could realistically just bite the Grout on. You know what? I'm going for the protect. I'm going for the double. Because you might just bite the Grout on instead of going for the Z into that slot. I'm gonna press up his blades here. Because Fire Punch won't knock out the Lunala. And I need Chip on Kang regardless. So I can put everything in blades range. Yeah, this matchup's really bad. Uh, <laughs> Kane doesn't help. Kane does not help. Failed a double. Goes for the low kick this time into Groudon. Z? We're going to see the Z. Who is this into? If this is Groudon, I'm going to kick myself a lot for not going for the Trick Room Protect. I feel like you should always be targeting the Krasma anyway, but we'll see here. Because I think it could realistically go out into the uh, Groudon. Listen to your guts, kids. Listen to your guts. Oh my lord. <laughs> uh, listen to your guts. I, I knew I should protect the Trick Room. I knew. That was the first play that came into my mind. Should have went for it. But then I was worried he would actually just go for the bite into ground on Z Moon Guys Beam the Necrozma. Oh well. Again, it's a matchup I just don't think you can win. Without being extremely lucky or getting every single hard read right and getting lucky at the same time. Because, again, I just don't think you can win that matchup. <laughs> it's... <laughs> How are you supposed to beat the Lunala? Because if Lunala sets up one, you are in so much trouble. Maybe what I, what did I have to change? Maybe I instead of going Lad, I, maybe I should have just let get got Necrozma in and attempted to trick him up and by flinch the Lunala, so I had a chance of getting to trick him. So Groudon could potentially sweep. Maybe that's how I had to play. I just don't know. That's always the one matchup I just never understood with this team and. Yeah, I don't think Kang helps. I bring Salamence more to that matchup than I do Kang. And it usually ends up helping more, I feel like. But we got Antonio from Italy as our next opponent. Uh, Ray Ogre. Okay. Again. <laughs> Let's see. Um. So last time we let Salamence to Krozma. And I feel like it went alright, but I felt like it could have gone better. I feel like against this team, just leading Groudon's pretty good against it. So I think I'm going to try out a Groudon Necrozma lead. Because I think uh, what Hirofumi wrote in his report, this is what he normally leads into this team. Salamence plus Lele in the back. Yeah, this is super scary. The Crobat has a guaranteed taunt. We don't know what kind of item the Crobat has. Whether it's Focus Ash or uh, Pyapa Berry. The... Requaz are super scared to deal with, the Tapu Koko can be annoying, and we also don't know what item the Incineroar is too, so definitely something that can be complicated, especially in the best of one setting, since uh, we can't really try to figure out and adapt to the sets, since we have to go in blind, but let's see how this is going to go. Hmm. I think overall, what would he bring to this matchup? I think if I was my opponent, I'd just bring Tapu Koko, Kyogre, and Cinema Rayquaza. I don't think Farifarn's good against me at all. I really don't. 
And I don't think uh, the Crow... I think Crobat's alright, but I don't think it's like the Pokemon I would rely on the most. Because I feel like if you know the team, if you know the Ray is usually faster, then that is pretty big. So let's see here. Groudon plus the uh, Necrozma will lead. Tapu Koko Kyogre. Okay, that's a pretty standard one. Tapu Koko's Electric Surge is going to activate... Kyogre is faster than Groudon, which is no surprise since this team doesn't carry Trick Room, so it at least probably has um, 31 speed IVs on the Kyogre, neutral nature. I can... I have to call whether the Rayquaza is coming in or if the Kyogre... This is... This is gonna be fun. I also don't know where the Z-Move is. I think it'd be Z-Move on the... I mean, which Z-Move the Tapu Koko has. I'm assuming the Tapu Koko Z, but I just don't know if it has a uh, Barium or Electrium. Which is a big factor. I don't want to catch a Ferium, so I think I'm just going to stay in normal form. I think I just go Lele here. Because I just... I feel like that covers most of the plays here. Because I get damage in the Kyogre regardless. I just don't know what you're really going to do here if you're my opponent. I guess maybe like you could switch out Kyogre and Incin. Actually, no. That doesn't make sense. You would be dealing with... Um, two Pokemon weak to ground unless you Volt switch out. But I could protect Necrozma, theoretically, but protect Necrozma is such a bad play if Ray comes in. Uh, you might just be Volt Switching here, though, which is definitely a possible play. So I'll bring in the Lele and try to get damage on this Kyogre. Let's see. It could be a Light Screen for Top of Coco, too. Now it's a Z-Move. It's Electrium, so it's going in Necrozma. That's pretty bad right now. That is pretty bad. Because that's going to do a lot of damage. Does that mean you're Ice Beaming too? Are you Gigabolt having Ice Beaming the uh, Necrozma slot? Trying to catch one or the other? How much is it doing? That did a bit too much. It is an Ice Beam though. Okay. Yeah, trying to get that. Okay. Photon guys are into the Kyogre slot. That's some good damage. I'm gonna psychic the top of Coco, and I think I am gonna photon geyser the uh, Kyogre slot. Yeah. At least we know where the Z move was on the top of Coco, and it did reveal it. Uh, luckily, my opponent went for the Ice Beam two into the Gigabolt Havoc because it wasn't able to knock on the Krasma. Now I threaten pressure. The problem is I don't know if the top of Coco is switching out into the Incineroar or not, but I'm not risking it. I'd rather go for psychic and lock myself in. Uh, we're going to see the Tapu Koko Retreat, probably in Cinnamore. Oh, it's Farifarn. Okay, my opponent brought Farifarn. Alright, I'll burst with my Ultra Necrozma. And, uh... My opponent actually stayed in with the Kyogre, so... Is Photon Geyser KO? I feel like it should. We also got a crit with Psychic. And that's not Assault Vest on Farifarn, that's for sure. Photon Geyser. Ooh, that's the power of Modest Necrozma. I don't... I feel like if we were timid, we definitely wouldn't have gotten that, so... Oh, man, that's pretty big. And leftovers on the Fairphorn it is. Okay. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Tapu Koko maybe coming back out? I don't think Tapu Koko should come back out, but it's a possibility. Yeah, Rayquaza comes back in. Or reveals itself to be the last Pokemon. I need to keep Tapaleta alive. I think the Wincon is getting growled on next to uh It's getting growled on next to these Pokemon. I'm gonna go into the Groudon here. I guess the question is what kind of Rayquaza this is? Is it banded or not? I think I don't need alternate Krasma anymore, so I think I'm actually gonna go for the light that burns the sky into Rayquaza. In the off chance my opponent goes for the Dragon Scent into the Tapaleta slot. Because if my, I either lose the uh, alternate Krasma to the Ray, which isn't that big of a deal for me, I feel like, because I get Salamence in for free, and I could go for like double edge the following turn, or like what happens is, um, what happens is a Dragon's Ascend banded 
attack or something like that into the Groudon, and then I'm able to knock out the Ray, and then Salamence should win the end game next to the Lele. Wait, is my oh wow? For some reason, my alternate Cosmo looks like it's faster than the Mega Rayquaza. So maybe this Mega Rayquaza is only maybe it's adamant, only meant to outspeed the. Uh, Maybe it's only meant to outspeed um, Xerneas and Mega Kangaskhan's. Yeah, somehow able to outspeed the Mega Rayquaza. I guess it's slower than Nihiligo, which is really nice. And yeah, that should seal up the game for the uh, Groudon. Groudon should be able to win in the back. So t Necrozma goes down, but at this point I can go out into Salamence, I think. Actually, I could just go Lele. I was worried about Hidden Power Water for a second, but since the Tapu Koko Z move, Hidden Power Water is not going to do enough to grout on. And a Moonblast, two Moonblasts will finish out the Tapu Koko guaranteed. So, yeah, this will be game. So, <laughs> luckily, the Necrozma being faster than the raid, I thought it was going to come down to a different situation. I thought um, the Rayquaza was going to outspeed my Ultra Necrozma and either KO it or. Um, Get a lot of damage into the Groudon, but looks like neither is that case there. As I get to click Moonblast plus Fire Punch, and that should secure the game 100%. Because uh, the Tapu Koko shouldn't be able to knock out the Groudon, at least I'm hoping it doesn't. Even if it does, Salamence could win in the endgame, maybe? Brave Bird Tapu Koko. Wait, was that a physical wild charge? From the Gigavolt Havoc? I didn't think that the Gigavolt Havoc did too, too much, but... Was it that was that the case? Huh. Okay. Interesting text right there. As Bearfront goes down the fire punch and as a hundred percent game because Lele will be able to outspeed the top of Coco with Moonblast and yeah, that's gonna seal up the game, so wow. Wow, I was not expecting the Brave or Top of Coco as Moonblast will finish out the top of Coco. And that is gonna be good game. So that is gonna be um that is going to be 1-1 one, one in our favor for today's episode of VGC 2019 Backs for Battles. I think the second game, definitely I think it was worth it. I think I kind of like the play my opponent made since it didn't super risk anything. But the fact is Modest when the Krasma went in there. The fact that we were able to knock out the Kyogre. Because I feel like if we were timid, we were never getting that knockout. But since we were Modest, we were actually able to get the knockout, which is actually a pretty big factor there. The Kyra hanged on with Sliver. The fact that it was getting a big damage off against my team or a knockout is pretty insane. Uh, but instead, we were able to knock out that uh, Kyogre. Also, against the uh, Rayquaza, we were able to outspeed it, which was something that surprised me even. But the fact is, since we were able to outspeed it, that was actually pretty huge. The first game, again, I just don't know what they're supposed to do against their Nisa and Nala. I feel like you have to get extremely lucky in that matchup. I don't think Kangaskhan helps either. I feel like, sure. You're immune to the ghost types. Or uh, ghost type attacks from Lunala, so you at least have a switch in. But you don't have a way that immediately threatens it. It gets Tailwind up. Or can just nuke your, one of your Pokemon, whether it's the Groudon, the uh, Necrozma, or the uh, uh, Lele. Uh, maybe I didn't have to bring Lele, but I don't know. I feel like I should bring Lele in that matchup. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know how you're supposed to approach that, but I feel like you... No matter what way I approach, it's still going to be an annoying matchup regardless. But maybe we'll find a way while we're playing this team. Maybe we'll find a new way to approach it. But otherwise, thank you all for tuning in today's episode of VGC 2019. Back to the Vows. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like down below. Show your support. Those of you can leave a comment down below. You can check out my social media down below as well as well as leave a comment down below. Uh, leave a like down below if you enjoyed this video and share this video with your friends. And yeah, you can check out Hero Fumi stuff down below in the description as well. It's Twitter and his report. Otherwise, be sure to answer the common question of today in the this comment section down below. But otherwise, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you to everyone who is supporting me on the on YouTube as well as the other platforms, especially my Patreon and my Twitch channel. If you want to go an extra mile to support me, you can go check out my platforms listed down below in the description. But otherwise, thank you all for tuning in. Have a great day, people. Until we battle again, we'll catch you all later. Mm -hmm.